Hey homeschool friends, welcome back to the channel. Welcome to another recap video. So my previous video was chatting about my fourth grader. This video is my third grader. You guys, I love looking back on the previous year. I like thinking about and reflecting about what went well, what didn't go well for my particular kiddos and how they've grown over the year. And I honestly find these videos to be in particular very helpful type videos because I've had nine months to use these programs potentially. You'll see with this child, this was the year where I switched the most with her and I'll kind of talk about that. But these videos give a little bit more, I don't know, boots on the ground approach to some of these programs that I have used for her over this past year. So let's just hop in and we'll chat more through kind of what worked, what didn't work, all the things with my third grader for this past year. So hi, my name is Angie, welcome to the channel, welcome back. Like I said today, we're gonna to be talking all about third grade, how it went, how challenging some parts of it were, especially if you have been following my channel and following my update videos, which I do monthly update videos on this channel, you, you probably know that my third grader has been my struggle for the year, but that's okay. That's okay, you know, it's just what she needs and I need to kind of figure out what she needs and we're working together on that. So I'm gonna detail that in today's video. I'm gonna try and remember to link a playlist because I have done this every year, I think, for a number of years. And so you can kind of look through those videos. I think they can be more helpful, especially if you're using some similar homeschool programs. Okay, so let's jump in. So what I have is I have last year's video, which I will kind of put up. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through it and chat through a bit of what my plan was and how did it go. So buckle up, because this is an interesting one. Let's start with language arts. So with language arts, I am doing a two-fold approach with her as well, using both sunlight and logic of English. And I use them in a very complementary fashion. Basically, I use sunlight for readers as well as composition, so writing. And then I'll use a little bit of their copy work and sometimes the copy work application, which I'll get into in a second. But then I have logic of English that covers all the other subjects like spelling, vocabulary, grammar, things like that. Okay, you see that I hopped into language arts. We're gonna camp here for a while. And actually, I feel like this is gonna be where I spend most of my time and then I'll get to some of the other subjects and you'll see that those have gone relatively better. But I said, that I was planning on kind of a two-fold approach, sunlight language arts plus logic of English. <laughs> We're not using either of those currently. We're not using either, but that's okay because I learned a lot about my daughter. What I wanted was I wanted those two programs to work together because they're very complementary. So I'll start with sunlight. The readers, amazing, outstanding. I love them. I would not trade sunlight readers for anything. I would use them and I continue to use them throughout this year even though we switched away from sunlight language arts. And so readers, top notch, we'll start with that. As for what happened first, logic of English kind of fell off the bus first, I would say. So what happened is I started using it with her because it's such a solid program. I really believe in it and I believe the education I would have given my daughter in language arts and understanding how it all works would have been super solid. She's just not the kid for it or she wasn't at the very beginning of the year when she was a newly turned eight year old. I feel like nine would be a better year to start essentials in my opinion or at least that's one I did with my son and it worked better for him but at the same time I still am not sure I believe that Logic of English Essentials would work for my daughter just because it is very straightforward. It's very rules-based, it's very black and white, it's very like memorization, practice, 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 which really works well for my son. And it just killed the love of learning for my daughter. I feel like she was just on the floor so many days. And so that was the first thing that I was just like, oh my gosh, this is a, this is a bad fit. But I didn't know that until I tried it, right? Like I really honestly didn't realize that. And so, it was kind of one of those moments where I was like, this is too much. And I pulled back and I was trying to really figure out what to do with her. So we still had sunlight language arts, which I feel like works really well for a bit. It was what we really used for the fall semester, I would say. Yeah, almost the whole fall semester we used sunlight and we used the entire program. We used the spelling. I picked up Wordly Wise and MCP Phonics to kind of take over 
those subjects from Logic of English. And so that worked fine. It honestly did. And we were working through the diamond notes and forming and constructing paragraphs. And you guys, I still am really drawn to how sunlight teaches language arts. And I still am planning on going back to it. So this is not one of those videos where I'm like, oh, I learned my lesson and now we're never gonna use sunlight language arts. I think I just have a few things that I need to work on, especially with my third grader, and a few things I had to realize about her. And so what ended up happening is we did use sunlight language arts for that chunk of time. And I'd say it was good to an extent. I feel like Partly it was me and my time and my ability to kind of make happen what I needed to happen with her. And I just, I couldn't, I have two kindergartners, I have a 10 year old, we're just really busy. And so it, a few things were falling off. And the big thing that was falling off was the writing or the creative expression. She was just going to pieces. She was crying and she was just like pushing back. She was just feeling very not smart. She did not know what I wanted from her. And I was trying to partner with her. I was trying to kind of like scribe for her and all these things. So don't think that I wasn't trying all those things. I was. It just, she wasn't doing well with kind of a blank open slate, if you will. And so what I decided to do around mid-year was I switched her to the good and the beautiful. And it's been a really good fit. She enjoys doing it. She thinks it's beautiful. She does. She likes the tandem reading, how we read together. Like I read a page, she reads a page. She likes those readers and those stories are really sweet. We're not doing super well with the spelling still. That's kind of on the table for maybe that won't be sticking around for next year. But otherwise it's going well. The, the composition part of the good and the beautiful I'm liking so far. I feel like she likes it mainly because it gives more scaffolding. Like it'll start with the opening sentence and then it'll have her fill in the rest of the sentence and then it'll start with this first chunk of the next sentence like also I like and then it leaves it blank you know and so it just kind of gives her those transitions is probably the best word for it as she practices her writing and she has thrived under that so I think those things are good and it's taught me a few things about my daughter whether she becomes my kiddo that just sticks with the good and the beautiful or not I think we're in a better place than we were at the beginning of the year with language arts. We started with sunlight and logic of English. We are no longer using either of those by the end of the year. It is what it is. I'm not thinking that they were bad choices. It just, we learned some things and I have to give myself the space to learn those things. You know what I mean? And not be so hard on myself that like I should have known or anything like that. She is different than her brother. She's different than all her brothers. And, and we're trying to work that out. So that's language arts. Let's just see, let's see what comes next on this video. So that leaves some language arts independent subjects, starting with some handwriting. So we are a big Danelian family around here. I love the Danelian style of handwriting. She needs to finish off grade two, which is transitioning to cursive before we go into grade three, which is cursive. Danelian handwriting. I love it. I still love it. It's a really good program and it works well for her. She was pushing back at the beginning of the year, but again, I think I had overloaded her on all of these things and there were so many things that were causing her distress, right? You know, and I figured that out and we made some changes, but there were so many things causing her distress that even handwriting was. And now come the end of the year, either one, she's progressed and matured, right? Like I can allow my child to do that or two, she's a little less overwhelmed in other areas that handwriting is no longer a big deal. And she'll just do it and she'll practice her cursive. What we did end up doing kind of to tide her over as she was kind of struggling with it is I would just write it out for her. There would be worksheets that would have the child going from like a printed phrase to where they have to write it in cursive and there was no like model of that phrase in cursive. What I would just do is I would write that phrase in cursive and she would copy my model, if you will. And it just worked better. So I just adjusted for her, but I don't even need to do that anymore. So handwriting was good. And then at third grade, I like to start a couple other subjects. The first being reading comprehension skill sheets. These are from Rebecca. I get grade two because Rebecca's always ahead, but I feel like these I hold loosely. The only reason I like using these and this resource, I'll just hold this up too. It's the test prep grade three, which we won't use till next year, till right before we take the standardized testing, is my state requires standardized testing. And I kind of appreciate having that little bit of accountability for myself and just, it's, it's more a check on myself and what I'm teaching. 
Oh, yeah. So we did do Abeka's reading comprehension as well as the test booklet. And so we standardized test. I really like it. I mean, I don't like it. I don't like doing it. The kids don't like doing it. I like having the results. I like understanding where my kids are. I've been able to glean information from those tests in the past and we will continue to use them. I only use these resources to help my kids feel more comfortable. I'm not like, oh my gosh, they need to practice this so that they can get high scores. I'm more interested in what they actually know. I just don't want their test scores to be impacted because they're not familiar with the structure of these types of tests. So especially the reading comp has been good. Like it's good for her to just read through the story and see if she can pull out those things. Yes, we do a lot of discussion and reading comprehension with our sunlight program, by all means. That's our biggest way of, of just chatting. But the standardized tests are not chat based. Like we can't discuss things. And so these help with that. And then third grade, we also start typing. So I will be starting her in typing one. This is the good and the beautiful. I like them because they're just, they're reusable. My son has been working through this and he's finishing up the summer and so she will start typing one. I'm putting together a computer station in our school room so we can use more computer stuff. All right, next, typing. So third grade is kind of when I started my son on typing and that's what I decided to do with my daughter. We use the good and the beautiful. It's just really easy to just use a Word document and I don't know, I feel like, yes, I could get kind of an online program but I just, I like it, it's simple and they're doing just fine and she's slowly teaching herself how to type. It's definitely an independent subject. I don't sit over her while she types, but I think she's doing a good job. And then we always do these mind bender books and I have her grade one, two book, which she hasn't finished all the puzzles in here yet. So she'll work her way through that. And then I did pick her up grade three to six, but these ones are pretty tricky. My son had a tough time with them. So I'm expecting she probably won't get too far into that book, but I have the resource for her in case. And then logic. She loves the logic puzzle so much that she flew through these and was out of pages by like mid year. My kids love the logic books, the mind bender ones in particular, and they just run through a bunch once they get to the level where they can understand it. But then like the books will kind of up the ante a bit and it'll be just a little harder and then they'll suddenly be overwhelmed by it. And then we stop. And then we wait until they're mature for that and then they run through a bunch of them again. It's just how we do mind benders. And so, yes, that's been a success. I feel like I hope they have those for a long time because I highly enjoy those puzzles. I remember from my childhood getting to work through tons of those types of puzzles. So math, we are still a Saxon family. I'm not switching that. She is going to be going into Saxon three next year. So I have the big old teacher's manual here and I picked up all the student sheets and the flashcard packet, right? So I am all set for her to go into level three. All right, guys, that left us with math. So you could see that we're using Saxon and that wasn't even on the table as something to switch. So Saxon math three was what I had my daughter do this year with Nicole the math lady. I had not made the decision to go with Nicole the math lady at that point in time when I recorded that video. But later last summer, I had done a comparison video, which I'll link above of some of the more popular online instructor type videos that go with Saxon. We decided on Nicole the Math Lady. It's been a really good fit. I feel like my daughter is doing well with math. I feel like she needs more math fact practice. I feel like that's what we're gonna be spending this summer on probably is to solidify some math facts. Even like subtraction and addition sometimes gets her. And so I do have some resources. I have the like Kate Snow resources, the addition facts and subtraction facts that stick resources. I'm not sure if I'm gonna be using those or what, but I also want her to work on her, her multiplication facts. Otherwise I feel like she's doing really well. What trips her up is the facts, but yet what also like makes her like cry a puddle of tears is practicing math facts or skip counting or anything like that, that I try and make it fun. Like we'll toss a bean bag back and forth or whatnot. She just uh, struggles. And I think for her, just her personality is it's like, she wants to know it without having to practice it. I'm coaching her a lot in that and teaching her a lot, mothering in a way as much as, as being her teacher, to teach her that like, in order to progress, things are hard as you're learning them. And then things become easy as you get better. 
But if you don't want to put yourself in that hard spot, you'll never progress. I was like, I have the example of her kindergarten brothers. I was like, yes, you could go back and do kindergarten math and you would rock it. You'd never have any problems. You would get nothing wrong. But do you want to stay at a kindergarten math level? And she's like, of course not. You know, and, and I have to remind her of those things that this is growth, this is normal, this is part of life and to be able to embrace that stuff. So anyway, that's a little tangent, but I'd say Saxon worked for her. Now, is she like amazing at math? No, but I think it works with the spiral. She's able to learn it. She's dragging a bit on her facts and so we're gonna address that this summer. But I think that was pretty much all of the video. The only part I talked about after that was probably our enrichment school, but I made a whole video about that. So I'll link that above in case you're interested in that aspect of our school. But otherwise, this is my daughter. This was my eight year old. She has a summer birthday. So she's been eight this whole year of third grade and she's doing well. We're figuring things out, even though it's been rocky. As I look back on her third grade year, I see progress. You guys, I see progress. I mean, I'm gonna give her her standardized test here in a couple weeks and we'll see how that falls out. And if I need to make adjustments, I will. But I'm proud of her. I'm proud of me for you know not panicking when things aren't as expected and to just you know continue to solve the problem. So that's my little bit of a recap and philosophizing here at the end. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope it was helpful. I hope you can kind of glean some information about how we use the programs. Please feel free to ask any questions down below if you have any further questions that I didn't kind of get to. But otherwise, you guys, that is what I have. That was a little bit of a recap for my third grader. And so I hope you all are well. And I hope you are having a wonderful day. And I'll see you in the next homeschool video. All right. Take care.